Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel and our little community of kit plane enthusiasts. Now if the title of this video caught your attention, welcome. My name is Mark and normally on this channel I document the build of my Zenith Super Duty and I also put some GoPro cameras on my Zenith Cruiser and I try to make interesting flying videos with that airplane. But today we're talking about this Pitts S1E. Now I'll give you a real quick history of this particular airplane. This is an E-model, and the E-model is the same as a Pitts S1S, but the E-model came from the factory as a kit, as opposed to a plans-built airplane. This particular airplane was built in 1989, and the story I got with this airplane is that it was built by an experienced Pitts builder. In fact, this is the fifth, air, the fifth Pitts that this builder has built, but he built it for another person. This other person only had a few hours of Piper Cub time when he went and flew this airplane. He scared the pants off of himself and apparently has never flown it again. Now, a few other experienced Pitts pilots have flown this airplane, but other than that, it's really been sitting around a hangar for quite some time. It's now, I've been looking for a single seat Pitts to own for a long time. And when I saw this one pop up on Barnstormers, the price was right and I jumped on it right away. Now, I live in Michigan and this airplane was in Texas. And as you can imagine, without this airplane flying for that long, I didn't wanna just go down to Texas and fly the airplane home. So, I flew down there on an airliner and we spent an entire day taking this airplane apart, stuffing it in the back of a U-Haul, and then it took me two days to drive it back home to Michigan. Now, now, while I was down there, I at least wanted to see if the airplane would start and run. So we did start the engine and taxi the airplane around. So check this out. Now, once I got this airplane back home to Michigan, I put all of the parts in my garage and started going through everything. Now, before I bolted the wings back on, I really wanted to go through this entire airplane myself to make sure it was up to standards or flying condition. And so I took all of the side panels off the airplane and really went through kind of every nut and bolt and every wire and really checked everything out before I put the side panels back on. Now, I'm really glad I decided to do that because one of these fuel lines up here I found was completely disconnected. Now I think it was just a vent line or a drain line, but still, you can't have fuel lines disconnected. Now one of the other things I found was back here where this bell crank is. This is the elevator push rod. And because this rotates, this is a bolt with a castle nut and a cotter pin. This was actually missing the cotter pin, which means that that nut could have spun off. And if that bolt came out, could be in real trouble. So those are the two major things I found by going through the airplane. Well folks, now I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of this video because I'm going to show you all of the things that I've been doing to make this airplane more beautiful and to ensure that it's safe for flight. Now there was one thing I wanted to do to the wings before I bolted them back onto the fuselage. You'll see on the top wing here, it's white and red. They never did finish painting the black trim between the red and the white. You can see if you look closely on the aileron, they've painted it there, but to the rest of the wing had no black trim on it. I figured that if I'm ever going to paint that black stripe, now would be the best time to do it before the wing is attached to the airplane. So I spent a lot of time masking off all of the trim, and once it was masked off, I sprayed the black paint, and once that was dry, I removed the tape, and you can see how much nicer it looks with the black trim. Now, if you guys don't know, I have a little home business called aircraftstickers.com, and I make airplane stickers and other vinyl graphics for people. And so I have a cutter, which means I can make pretty much anything I want. So, of course, the first thing I had to do was put my name on the side of the airplane. Then, with this blank backrest area here. I thought it would be cool to make a little checkerboard with a, the Pitts logo. And then you'll see the throttle quadrant here. Now the actual throttle is removed, but there's no markings on it. So I made the uh, idle and throttle and full 
placard to put on this piece of aluminum. Next, I took this little aluminum trib tab off the rudder because it was kind of corroded and dirty. And I took it and I used my flits and I've polished it up to a nice shiny aluminum. Now it looks really nice. Now here's my favorite thing I did to beautify this airplane. Take a look at those foot rests. They are just old, dirty, ugly aluminum pieces. So I removed both of these and you can just see how dirty and nasty they are. But other than that, you know, they're really wavy and bent. They're easy to step on. And you can see this corner here obviously was built with a chainsaw. So I took some time and cleaned them up. I filed that edge or corner real nice and smooth. Then I took them and had them powder coated white, which really made them look nice. And I used this rubberized anti-skid tape to put on it so my feet don't slip around. Now they look really, really nice. In fact, they look brand new in the airplane. I also added this little uh, USB charge port because I wanted a way to plug in a GPS. With all the work done, it was time for the fun part, and that is installing the wings back on the airplane. You can see I have the airplane sitting in some wooden jigs that I've made to level the fuselage. And then I had a friend of mine come out who is a very experienced biplane builder. In fact, he's designed and built a couple different biplanes uh, by himself. So we got the wings installed and we got them rigged, and the next thing you know, I've got a beautiful little pit sitting in the hangar. With the airplane put back together, now it was my turn to jump in, start the engine for the first time, and do my first taxi. Now all I did was taxi down to the end of the taxiway and back, but that was pretty fun to do. Well, you might be thinking at this point, the airplane is ready to go fly. So why is it still all torn apart? I'll talk about that in episode two. So for now, thank you so much for watching this video. Welcome to the channel. If you wanna follow along on the pits, the Xena Super Duty, or go for a ride with me into Blue Angels Cruiser, make sure you subscribe to this channel. And if you don't mind, hit that thumbs up button.